I'm really happy that the Sarojini Naidu School and particularly the Department of Dance and more particularly Professor Anurada have taken special interest to convince Madam to be here with us uh, this afternoon to share her knowledge in a specialized in a focused area. Well, as we by now we have already learned that. She has rich experience and wide knowledge in varieties of uh, things. But then, all that we cannot get it in one day. She will share. She has kindly agreed to talk to us through this distinguished lecture, Madam. This is a, a tradition that this university has started several years ago. Whenever we have some outstanding scholars, to request them to uh, share their knowledge. Uh, through a distinguished lecture series. And that's where when Professor Anurara wanted you, we said yes, there cannot be a, another better person in this area to uh, listen to. And uh, we are so grateful to you. As on behalf of the university, I would like to thank you. And uh, also I would like to thank the school and department and Anurada once again for taking this initiative. And I don't want to waste much of the time and I want to request you to uh, give your lecture on Rabindranath and the Vaishnava imagination in art and poetry. Thank you very much. Please. Anugrihitasmi, I am really honored with your kind words and heartfelt invitation. I just want to add a few things about myself. Uh, the book on the folk paintings of Bengali Ramayana has already been published. It's out. And the history of Hinduism, the goddess, that book has already been, has gone to print at Oxford. So that, that bit is done. I'm working on the manuscripts of the unknown text of Kohala, which was supposedly have written around second century Bharata's, by Bharata's disciple Kohala. Wish me luck to achieve my goal, to finish my <coughs> other projects. So with that, I invoke Saraswati, Manase Ramatang, Nityan Sarva Shukla Saraswati. As you have said, it's hard that I have worked mainly in the tradition of dance literature, shastras on dance. But I also have studied the Ramayana. And I am a student of Dharma Shastra, Smriti and Mimamsa. So I have published a few books on that. And uh, being a Bengali, I cannot but study Tagore. And uh, another thing, I have actually, uh, I was a teacher, not only director. I was teaching in the religious uh, studies of my university for 25 years. And I taught Hinduism mainly, but Buddhism, Jainism as well, and women and religion. So I have experienced a lot of Hindu tradition. And I present to you my humble essay, writing, finding, and want to share it with you through painting and poetry. I need the light, please. This light. Okay. Thank you. Among those Indian writers in whom the bhakti tradition survived in modern times, the most notable was Rabindranath Tagore. It will not be an overstatement if we claim that Rabindranath's love of poetry and music had roots not only in Vaishnava poetry, but also in the paintings of Pahari and Mughal schools, which were themselves outcrops of the bhakti tradition. Although 
by Rabindranath's own admission, the spirituality of bhakti left him untouched. Its perception of the natural and the human worlds molded his response to nature and his conception of emotional states. While in rhetoric formed his poetic, its rhetoric formed its poetic mood. That to this day, almost 80 years after Rabindranath's death, Bengal still finds its voice largely in the imagery and sentiments, argues the vitality of the bhakti tradition and the Vaishnava imagination. It's in Rabindranath then we find the paradox of a cultural phenomenon that gained a renewed life even as its primary spiritual hold weakened. Rabindranath's first response to Vaishnava poetry was through Jayadeva's Gita Govinda, which he read before he reached his teens. <coughs> we are not sure which collection he had access, but the match between his poems and the several paintings that we are going to see from these schools seems very convincing. His first experience of Indian paintings came through his grandfather Dwarakanath Tagore's collection of Rajput, Pahari, and Mughal paintings. The impression of these experiences is stamped on virtually every one of his vast body of poems and songs on prema, romantic love, and prakriti, nature, as well as his musical plays and dance dramas, Nritya Natya and Geeti Natya. The genesis and course of these encounters tell us as much about the imaginative force of bhakti as about the capabilities of an imaginative genius. In Jibon Smriti, his memoir, the principal memoir, Rabindranath tells us how as a young boy, he was at <coughs> attracted to the rhythm and imagery of Vaishnava poetry. Speaking of his father in the section entitled Pitri Deva, he recalls how he found an old manuscript of Gita Govinda on a river trip with his father and how he was drawn to Jayadeva's Madhura Kanta Komala Padavali by such melodic, sweet and gentle verses as Nibhrito Nikunja Griham Gataya Nishi Rahasi Niliya Vasantam I reached the lonely forest grove where he secretly lies at night. It was from such examples that he drew inspiration for his own youthful poetry of romance in his early work, Bhanu Singh Her Padavali. Shyamare Nipatakathina Manator Virahasakhi Sathikari Dukhi Niradha Rajani Karatabhi Bhor O Shyam, you have a hard heart Poor Radha spends the night with the loneliness of separation. The first, this one, matches with his idea and imagination of Radha's loneliness, who is consoled by her Sakhi. Tagore copied by hand Gita Govinda in its entirety so that he might read it again and again to himself. Since the copy of that manuscript gave the text without any punctuation, no doubt following the common practice of manuscript orthography, Rabindranath had to work hard in voicing the poem by laboriously scanning the center poem entire poem and records his delight when he was able to do so. As he tells in his Jivan Smriti, this apprenticeship was the basis not only of his astonishing metrical inventiveness, but also his skill as a songwriter. Few works of literature have left as deep and lasting a mark on a nation as Jayadeva's Gita Govinda. Soon after its appearance in the 12th century, it swept through India and through the, through the succeeding centuries, Vaishnava songs came to occupy the minds of the muses of Eastern India. At least 40 poems were written in imitation of Jayadeva's style on the love of Radha and Krishna, both in Sanskrit and in vernacular languages all over India. 
By the 13th century, Jayadeva's fame had spread to West and South India and to Nepal. Under Chaitanya's influence, Bengal, already influenced by Vaishnava devotionalism, became a center of bhakti, and all over Eastern India in Assam, Bihar, and Orissa, the celebration of the love of Radha and Krishna became a strong religious force which found expression in the literature, dance, and music of these regions. The influence of Gita Govinda extended to art as well. Between 17th and 19th centuries, five sets of paintings on Gita Govinda alone were produced, hundreds of paintings on the Krishna and Radha theme for the Bhagavata Purana and other Vaishnava poems written around this time were produced. Paintings expressed different ragas and ra with ragad dhyana shlokas known as Ragamala paintings were also produced around the Krishna and Radha theme. That theme influenced even the Mughal school of painting. On music, Jayadeva's influence was particularly strong and to this day Jayadeva's songs may be heard in Bengal and Odisha as well as in the neighboring provinces. Not surprisingly, Jayadeva in whom he discovered an entire realm of, to explore most powerfully stirred young Rabindranath's imagination. This interest was reinforced when he came across more poems from the Padavali genre through the friends of his elder brother Jyotirindranath Tagore who were themselves poets. They often discussed the di writings of the Vaishnava poets and two of Jyotirindranath's friends Akshay Chandra Sarkar and Sarada Chandra Mitra brought out collections of poems by Vidyapati, Jandidas, and several lesser lights of the Vaishnava school. Often the obscurity of the Maithili phrases in the poems was a special allure and Rabindranath systematically studied them to get a feel for the language. This fascination dis depended when he deepened, sorry, when he saw the painting of Rajput, Pahari, and Mughal schools in the collection of his grandfather, Dwarakonath Thakur. A great t uh, number of paintings from these schools portrayed the love of Radha and Krishna. Gita Govinda furnished the themes of many such paintings through medieval to modern times in India. The twin experiences of Vaishnava poetry and corresponding paintings remained a lasting influence through Rabindranath's entire life. So deep was this influence that Rabindranath encouraged his nephew, the artist Avurindranath Tagore, to study these paintings along with Vaishnava Padavali. A number of Avurindranath's paintings show this how fruitful this advice proved to be. Those of you who are in art history may have experienced this. Rabindranath's first exposure to Jayadeva was at the age of 11, and at age 14, he came across more Vaishnava poetry. Although he also began to read the, and enjoy classical Sanskrit poetry, he knew Sanskrit very well. At this time, his favorite was Kumara Sambhavam. He took Vaishnava verse as his model. He had access to no reliable guide to the language of the Padas, thought by many contemporary scholars to be a language derived from Maithili termed Brajavali, Buli. But by patiently studying the diction of the Padas, Rabindranath was able to write in a style close enough to theirs. Although he believed it was a make-up language, but he mentioned that the difficulty of understanding Brajabuli made him concentrate on sound and rhythm. He followed this idea when he wrote his first two lines at the age of, I think, around 18, in the style imitating the Padas, Gahana kusuma kunjo maaje, mridula madhura bangshi baaje. In the flower grove, the gentle and sweet flute plays on. Shortly thereafter, he published an 
entire cycle of poems in the same style, attributing them to a mythical Vaishnava poet called Bhanu Shingher Padavali and Bhanu Shingha. The and entitling, entitling the collection Bhanu Shingher Padavali. He disclosed his authorship immediately and admired that, admired and admitted that it was a light-hearted attempt to emulate Chatterton's similar pretense of discovering the imaginary old. <coughs> Thank you. He admitted that it was a light-hearted attempt to emulate Chatterton's similar pretense of discovering the imaginary old poet Rowley. Rabindranath was given the idea unwittingly by his brother's friend, Akshay Chandra Sarkar, who told him about the boy poet Chatterton. Rabindranath completed this set of 20 poems, celebrating the love of Radha and Krishna at the age of 18, when he was quite unsure of his poetic ability. Later, he altered the ar arrangement of the poems and added two more poems. This is what we find in the latest edition of Bhanu Shinghar Padabuli. The youthful need to imitate what had enthralled him was later viewed by him with some embarrassment, as attested by his introduction to Bhanu Shinghar Padabuli. It was published by the age of 22. In his collected wor works, he has shown some embarrassment for this uh, childly, childish writing. But I, we don't think so, as you will understand when I read more. He deplores what he considers to be the inadequacies of the poems, saying Bhanu Shingher Padavali merely imitated the language of the Vaishnava poets, but had no kinship with the Vaishnava worldview. While true in reference to Vaishnava spirituality, this ju judgment must not be allowed to distract critical attention from Rabindranath's lifelong attachment to Vaishnava poetry, not only in terms of style, but in terms of emotional definition. In retrospect, Rabindranath's interest seems to have been more than a youthful infatuation, for he made a sustained effort to collect and publish the vast body of Vaishnava poetry. In 1885, at the age of 24, he finally brought out jointly with Srish Chandra Majumdar a collection entitled Padaratnavali, containing po poems by Vidyapati, Chandidas, Govindadas, Jnanadas, Balaram Das, Rai Shekhar, Rai Vasanta, Ananta Das, Yadunandan Das, Yadu Das, Narattam Das, Uddhav Das, Vamshi Das, Narasimha Das, Bipra Das, Ghosh, Yadavendra, Madhava Das, Prema Das, Vrindavan, Srinivas Das, Jagannath Das, Bipra Das, Vrindavan Das, Narahari Das, and Lochana Das. So he collected all these by the age of 24. And this is, a diff this is a huge contribution because all these Vaishnava poetry were uh, here and there, all over. And he was able to concentrate and accumulate them and publish it. Recently, it has been republished from Shanti Ketan. The editors depended on a number of already published collections for this edition, one major source being Sri Sri Padakalpotari edited by Shatish Chandra Rai. In the same year, Rabindranath brought out a second edition, adding a hundred more padas. He continued to enlarge his collection, and one of his efforts was a manuscript collection of 40 padas with annotations, now in Vishwabharati archives at Shantiniketan. Some padas from his later collections have been included in a recent edition of Padaratnavali, came out in 1990. It, along with some of his own Bengali renderings. 
After Padarat Navali, Rabindranath turned his energies to translations of Vidyapati and Chandidas's Padavali, as reported in The Englishman in 1995. Sorry, in 1915. <laughs> this, however, this Englishman is a newspaper which came out in, in Britain. And it was reported there in 1915. This, however, was not, never published in his lifetime, despite continued effort on his part. This constant interest was certainly not due to any identification with the Vaishnava religious life. Rabindranath's religious convi convictions were strong, but they grew out of his knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads, to which he had been introduced by his father, Devendranath Tagore, when he was about 10. The songs known as Brahma Sangeetas are impregnated with the spirituality of the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads. The Krishna worship of Jayadeva or Vidyapati forms no part of Bhanu Shingher Padavali or any other work of Rabindranath. Vaishnava poetry in general and Jayadeva in particular served him as sources to be mixed, to be mined for the enchantment of rhythm, diction, and imagery. This was the motivation that led to the publication of Padaratnavali, about which Biman Bihari Mojumdar comments in his Rubindra Shangite uh, Shahitte Padaboli Sthan, that it was the first collection of the Vaishnava poetry which was not presented as a text pertaining to the Vaishnava faith. A judgment that echoes Rabindranath's own disclaimer about Bhanu Shingir Padavali and his rhetorical question, does the Vaishnava sing only to reach Vrindavan? If we are to go by Rabindranath's own testimony, it was the music of Jayadeva's verse that held him by the closest ties. While he learned his craft from diverse traditions, both Indian and European, Rabindranath derived much of his skill with syllabic measures, alliteration, and assonance from Gita Govinda. Among many examples is the poem and popular song, Shesh Minoti. Listen to the alliteration. Ke sharo kirno kadam bobone, mar maro mukharito mridu pavone, barshano harsho dharani, Viraho Bishonkito Koruno Katha. In the pollen strewn Kadamba Grove, the murmuring voice of the gentle breeze, the earth brimming with the joy of rain, trembling with a sad tale of parting. The balanced flow of the lines is achieved here both through alliteration and a four beat structure varied by emphasized measures in the first and third lines. As examples of the metrical brilliance, Rabindranath frequently cited Jayadeva. For instance, in Chanda, his treatise on meter, he uses the term, the line, Biharati Haririha Sarasavasante, as illustration. Again, in Jibansmiti, he recalls the lilt of Nibhito Nikunja Griham Gataya Nishi Rahasinili Abasantam. The truth, however, is that the influence of Jayadeva and Rabindranath was by no means limited to metrical manipulation, but helped to form his perception of the world at a deeper level. This is not surprising. For over and above their musical movement, the lines quoted above show the resonance between human experience and landscape and the atmosphere, which is characteristic of Vaishnava poetry particularly Gita Govinda. Both the movements of the verse and the imaginary and imagery of separation echo Jayadeva's portrayal of lovers suffering separation in spring. Lalita lavanga lata parishila namalaya samire madhukara nikara karamba dita kokila kujita kunja kutire biharati hariri hasarasavasante Nityati jivati janena samam sakhi birahi janat sadurante. Soft sandal mountain winds, caress quivering voices of dove, 
forest hearts hum, droning bees and crying cuckoos. When spring's mood is rich, hurry roams here to dance with young women, friend, a cruel time for deserted lovers. Here you see Krishna is playing and singing with other young gopis in Vrindavan, whereas Radha is sad, sitting there. One of her sakhi is coming to tell her, no, no, he is yours. He's just talking to others. The world of nature painted by Jayadevo created an entire convention for presentation of love marked by the physical signifiers such as Kadamba Vana, Kadamba Grove, Varshana, rain, Meg, cloud, Kunja Kutir, forest bar, and Abhisara, tryst. As an aesthetic construct, this convention was powerful enough to flourish even when divested of its spiritual content. It determined the design of Rajput and Pahari paintings on the Radha and Krishna theme and reappears as the formative principle of Rabindranath's romantic landscape, which becomes the essential correlative of passion not only in his overt Padavali imitations, but in all his explorations of love through his song. Not only was nature's beauty a value in itself, it is also set Radha and Krishna in a human setting. Like Jayadeva, Rabindranath could see the metaphors for all human be lovers, but unlike Jayadeva's, he could not or would not extend the metaphor to a metaphysical symbolization of Radha and Krishna as the yearning of the human and soul for the divine. Rabindranath's Radha and Krishna are unambiguous human figures, and he has a direct personal engagement with the emotional events revolving around them. Whereas Jayadeva's figures are divine beings in human form whom he worships from a distance. This also explains why the speaker in Bhanushinger Padavali is an insider, a participant, such as Radha herself or one of her companion. By contrast, the speaker in Gita Govinda is Jayadeva himself, who observes and narrates an evolving action. Rabindranath's direct engagement with his creation makes his poems lyrical distillations of the moods, but the very power of the experience underlying each poem keeps it distinct and separate from the others. While Jayadeva's distance allows him to develop a dramatic narrative out of emotional events, each leading to the next and evolving into an ununified sequenced action. Yet some rhetoric drives the work of both poets and the trade paths that run parallel much more closely than Rabindranath's comments suggest. As in Jayadeva and in paintings, so do the Rabindranath's, the sylvan scenery of spring and monsoon appear as the only proper settings for ecstasy. In poem after poem, not only the immature Manusinghir Padavali, but also later works that Rabindranath held in much higher regard, he recalled the word of Jayadeva. Nilanjana Chaya Profullo Kadambo Bono. The shadow of the blue sky blue black sky and the smiling Kadamba Grove. Oi Ashe Oi Oti Bhira Boharoshe. Jalo Shin Chitokiti Shaura Bhuravoshe. Ghano Jaura Be Nabo Jauvana Barosha. Shamagum Hiro Sharosha. There the shik there she comes in thunderous joy, bearing the sweeping fragments of the rain soaked earth monsoon in her budding youth with cloud-filled grandeur, dark, heavy, and water-laden. Kunja kutire oi bhaba kulo lochana, bhurujo patae nabogito karo rachana. Yonder young maiden with passion-laden eyes, 
sitting in the forest grove is composing new songs on bhurja leaves. These lines not only echo Jayadeva's lilt but also reproduce the world Jayadeva creates in Gita Govinda. The second, third painting. May, this begins thus. Meghair meduram ambaram banabhuvo sashamattamala dumail naktam bhirurayam pameva tadidam radhe griham prapayo. Clouds thicken the sky, tamala trees darken the forest, the night frightens him. Radha, you take him home. Here is Radha's. Radha is waiting and Krishna's father is telling Radha while they were crossing the forest, the father had to go somewhere. The father is asking Radha to accompany Krishna who is much younger than her. You see, it's not very clear but I hope that you can see that Krishna is much younger, to, uh, smaller than Radha here. And the dress here is speaks of Mughal uh, influence. And this is not very clear, I'm sorry, but the next one will be. The night frightens him. Radha, take him home. Cloud thickens the sky. sky. Tamala trees darken the forest. The night far frightens him. Radha, you take him home. This image of cloud-covered forest groves appears again and again in Rabindranath's poetry. In a poem in Minoti, he places himself with Jayadeva in a similar scene. Ami boshe achi, shamo bango deshe, jetha Jayadev kobi kon biroh dine, borsha dine dekhe chila digante tamalo bipine, shamo chaya purna mehe meduro ambor. Here I am in the green land of Bengal, where on some days rains of poet Jayadeva saw above tamalo groves on the horizon. This dark shadow swelling clouds covering the sky. In Rupantar, he reiterates the same image. Ambude ambude sing snigdho, tamale tamisra banabhumi, timiro sarabari eje, shanka kulo shangela hotumi. The sky softened by clouds, the groves by tamala trees darkened, the night is black, he is fearful, take him with you. In a poem from Shonartori, he refers to the same line. Kuliya pratham pata gita govinder gatha gahi mehe medura ambar. Opening the first page of Gita Govindo, I sing the sky is overcast with clouds. The date here cannot be solely metrical. The cultural imagery that was Jayadeva's forest groves by the river Yamuna as Rabindranath's literary template for the whole experience of love. That template, its details enriched by the Kangra and Pahari paintings, inspired by the Vaishnava aesthetic, includes illustrations of Gita Govindo, was as much a sh shaping tool for the young poet's growing romantic sensibility as for his style. The parallels to Gita Govindo in Rabindranath's poetry are obviously persuasive. Equally prominent Though not always noticed is the correspondence between Rajput and Pahari paintings and Rabindranath poetry. Not only Bhanushinghir Padabali but also many other poems. The following verses, for example, are explicit responses to paintings from the schools, from these schools, in particular from the series of paintings illustrated Gita Govinda. Can you show the next one? Shangana gagane ghor ghana ghata nishitha yamini re Kunja pathe sakhi kaise yavav avala kamini re Dark rumbling clouds in the monsoon sky, the night dense How will you tread the forest paths, friends, helpless maiden that you are? This one was produced by a Pahari painter and it, was, it is describing, painting Radha who is afraid to go to the trees to meet with Krishna. The night is dark 
इट इज रेनिंग शी इज अफ्रेड हाउ वू लाइक गो कैसे जाओ वह इन बेंगाली ही राइट सुर कोरी बार बार पोरी बर्षा अभिसार अंधकार जमुनार ती निशिथे नबीना राखा ना ही माने को बाधा कुंज खुजीते निकुंज कुटीर एगेन एंड अगेन आई रिसाइट ट्यूनफुली द टेल ऑफ द मानसून ट्रिस्ट ऑफ द डियर डार्क ब्रांच बैंक्स ऑफ यमुना वेर इग्नोरिंग एवरी ऑब्स्टाकुल यंग राधा सर्च इज फॉर फ्लावर ग्रो In another poem, I won't read the Bengali. The month of Ashar is coming to its end. By blending Mallar and Desh ragas, I compose a monsoon melody after opening the first page of the lyric Gita Govinda. I sing the sky is full of clouds. Love in springtime, Basanta Avalade. Spring has arrived. Madhu kara gun gun amya manjari. The bees are humming around the buds. Kanana chavalare, covering the entire grove. Suno suno sajani rida ya prana mama. Harak akula bhel. Listen, my friend, my heart and soul are ecstatic with joy. Aju shakhi muhu muhu ga happy ka kuhu kuhu kunja bane duhu duhu doharu pane chai. Can you change it? Yeah. Friend, the cuckoo is singing away today incessantly in the forest grove. The lovers are gazing at each other. Want to say that these paintings had influenced him to write that poem. Radha and Krishna here is in print time. The next one, the picture is painting is Krishna playing his flute with the sakis. Another, Radha and Krishna, sitting in a grove. Then we find also Radha is abandoned by Krishna, and Radha is lamenting. Rida ya ka sadha misha vala rida ye kante sukha vala mala. Sometimes I wonder, is it Gita from Gita Govinda or from the paintings? My heart's desire has withdrawn into my heart, and the garland has dried. Here is Radha abandoned by Krishna, and Radha's friend has gone to Krishna, to say, asking him to join Radha. But Radha could not see Krishna could not be found. So the next painting is. Searching for Krishna. Sunala sunala valika, rakha kusuma malika, kunje kunje pheranu sakhi, sham or chandra nahire. This is Tagore's. Listen, friend, put away your flower garland. We searched every grove, my friend. Sham or chandra cannot be found. So everybody is searching for Krishna, and Krishna is somewhere hidden over there. and the final painting is when krishna is lamenting because he has to leave radha and she, he is he found out that radha has also abandoned him temporarily so he is just sitting there in a painting and in tagore's poems ami boshe achi Shamo Bongo Deshi, here am I am in the green land of Bengal. Jetha Joy Dev Kobi Kon Borsha Dine, where once some rainy day, Dekhe Chilo Digon Ter Tamalo Bipine, saw the Tamalo Grove on the horizon. Shamo Chaya Purno Mekhe Medura Ambar, dark shadows, the sky darkened by swelling clouds. Ogo. नदीगुले तीर तृण दले के बसे अमल बसने श्यामल बसने सीटिंग द ग्रासिड रिवर बैंक क्लैड इन ब्रिलियंट वार्डेंट रेमेंट दिस इज कूड बी गीत गोविंद दिस कूड बी टेगोर एज दिस करसपन्डेंसिस 
show Rabindranath's emphasis on the exclusive influence of metrical meter with notwithstanding, the aesthetic of bhakti acts as one of the prime determinants of his poetic identity. In turn, the central, central position of Rabindranath in Bengali culture ensured a renewed life for that aesthetic, although its base shifted from the religious to the secular. This is a shift that marks both the connection and the distance between Rabindranath and Joy Deva, while at the same time it asserts the continuity of the bhakti tradition in the cultural life of India. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful lecture, madam. Now, normally we may not have uh, special question and answers, but uh, as a special case, maybe we can request madam to answer a few questions if uh, some of you have want to know a little more on any of the points that madam has made. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful lecture. Um, in the beginning of the lecture, you happened to mention that uh, bhakti and the tradition of bhakti left uh, an imprint on Tagore's view of nature as well as on human emotions. Uh, can you uh, elaborate on both, or if the time is a little constrained, but I would like to know uh, Bhakti's influence on Tagore's conception and view of nature. He got inspiration from these paintings at a very early age, and the paintings that he encountered uh, in his uh, grandfather's chest. And that imagination, along with the Padaratnavali, all the Padas, the Vaishnava Padas, that describe nature and human emotion. And that influenced him, him so much. He wrote 3,000 po poems, and uh, with, with not only 3,000 poems, but set to ragas, set to music. And those, the wordings that, if you can read Bengali, not through translation, you can re read and listen, that it echoes the emotion. And this Abhisarika, all these paintings, or not only paintings, but writings, influenced him. But he was not a religious person that way. The religious religion that touched his heart is came from the Upanishads mainly. But the entire genre of that beauty finding in the nature and the love between human and human soul and divine soul, it really influenced him in expressing the love between human beings. It not the religious aspect of it, but what these poems and paintings gave him. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, I have a small doubt. Whether uh, what is the conception or perception of God in uh, Rabindana Tagore's ideas? Uh, and uh, how far was the influence of Brahma Samaj or Vaishnavism on uh, Rabindranath Tagore? And is it uh, where, when he says the where the mind is with uh, without fear, and uh, the, unto that path go, God to lead us all, uh, ask God to lead all of us. Uh, what how I means how was the perception of God actually for Rabindranath Tagore? And he, was he the same person, or, or is the God himself the Bharat Bhagya Vidada too? This his national national feeling. Okay, these are separate these are separate things. But uh, I'll try to answer uh, one at a time. Rabindranath was uh, a follower of I would say Manavu Dharma. That's why he could write Chandalika, where he did not see any distinction between human beings. J Manavu Ami Shei Manavu Tumi comes out of a Buddhist sannyasi that I am the same person as a Chandal Karna. So he had this Manava Dharma embedded in himself. And he was a follower of Upanishadic teachings. At the age of 10, his father introduced him to Upanishad. The thing is that if you are talking about Dharma, the Dharma has, in the Hindu tradition, we, have, we are gifted with uh, a wonderful thing that we can question. So if we have any doubts, we look at another set of sayings by great people. Upanishad 
could be path showing, patha pradarsha for one person, for one person Bhagavad Gita, for another person some Vedic ritual. Ritual is important for some of somebody, somebody else, it's not. Tagore was following his father's, father's footsteps. Some of the Bengalis at that time formed Brahma Samaj. It is a rebellious thing. It's a rebellious daughter of Hinduism, just as Hinduism, Jain, Buddhism, Jainism, rebellious daughters. As such, Brahma, Brahma Samaj was born. And the initial people who uh, were instrumental in founding them, they were very, very uh, serious and devoted. Tagore, in his own conviction, he wrote some Brahma Samhits. He believed in oneness of God, but he was not a, a practicing religious person. He was a follower of Manava Dharma, as much as I can tell. And what was the other question? No, that, that has a political implication there, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, when, where the mind is without fear, that is talking about that Manava Dharma, as far as I can tell. Oh, I wouldn't say that culturally. I, we speak in his own language after so many, almost 80 years after his death. And, uh, and this, I was hesitant to give this lecture because since the Bengali, uh, I had to use some Bengali poems. I hope I didn't bore you with this uh, because I tried to translate all of them. It was relevant uh, in 40s, in 50s, even now, we, when we express our love, our uh, you know love for only, not only human being but also nature, we speak in Tagore's language even today. So it is embedded in our existence. How much of his ideology or his belief system has been reflected in his dance dramas, the five dance dramas, Shama, Chandalika, and others? How do you look at them? Because you have been, I don't know whether you, uh, you, you have been trained in uh, Ravindra Ritya. Yeah. You, I, I, I don't know whether you, have, you had a personal interaction with uh, Tagore or no. not. No, I, was, I wasn't born that early. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, close enough, yeah. close enough. I, was, I grew up with this atmosphere of yeah. Tagore's everything, and I uh, performed all those five dance dramas. And uh, there are messages there in each of them, as Chandalika talks about Manava Dharma, Chitrangada talks about uh, a woman's identity. Chitrangada wants to be in her own identity. So he was very aware of the uh, ills in this uh, social system, looking down upon women. Uh, Chitrangada declares him herself, Ami Rajendra Nandini, I'm the princess. I'm just not a, just a woman that you could just shove me away. So that is one, though all five have something to offer. Valmiki Pratibha, for instance, it, he deals with Valmiki's Ramayana, where he says that how the Pratibha of Valmiki came into existence and where, how the whole scenario was around the killing of um, the Kranchabadha and then also the Dasus and things. So he was lo looking at Ramayana from a different point of view. He wrote another, Kal Kalmrigaya. Kalmrigaya is about Sindhubad. So all these very sentimental things, he took them out, put them to the ordinary people's mind. So in a way, he made the Bengalis aware of what is in the Puranic tales and things like that. So he did a lot of things, not, not only Prema and uh, Prakriti. 
puja, prem, prakriti, and all sorts of the 3,000 songs that he composed. And that's the lasting influence that still exists in the. Does that answer your question? Oh, Shama. Shama is this, the, the way the Shama uh, tries to uh, save her lover or whom she wanted to be with by uh, destroying another's life. And that is not something that is allowed. So that it, it could not be Milananta. It could not be a comedy. It had to end in a tragedy. So uh, although in Sanskrit drama we cannot have tragedy, but Tigor defied that in the Bengali dramas, Bengali versions. If there is some kind of injustice, it should not be tolerated. That's why Chandalika ends in kind of, you know, sad note. Balmiki Pratibha, Kaunri Gaya, all of them ends in sad note. Chandalika, the saddest note. Only Chitrangada has something not so sad. It, it's a statement for women. And there has been a lot of material for uh, research how these women were looked by Tagore. And he was instrumental in bringing out women of, her, of his family to the forefront in the 40s. Nobody would allow their daughters uh, from a good family to dance pu in public. He and a few others, his followers, Amartya Sen's uh, mother was dancing at that time. Uh, Nandalal Bose's daughter, his own nieces, they danced because they came from this, you know, uh, respectable family. When they danced, all of us from you know, well-to-do family or noble family, they were allowed. That's how dance came to the front, front forefront, uh, not looked down upon. So that is another way, another side of Tagore, which was followed by Vallathol immediately that uh, Kerala Kalamandalam, and also Rukmini Devi Arundel. Then he, she did the Kalakshetra. All these things came from Tagore long time ago, with a few friends to, for supporting him. I don't know whether uh, this kind of presentation is, has inspired anybody, but I hope so. <laughs> Madam, we have a small token from our university. It's only a small memento uh, for you to remember so our <laughs> university when you go back to Vancouver. Thank you so much. We have a, a mushroom rock, we call it, on the campus. Oh. Here's the picture of that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I request Professor Anuradha to propose a vote of thanks. Good evening. It's a very, very specialized kind of a topic that she chose today. But of course, it's of interest to several on campus. So we thought we would proceed and go ahead with that. First and foremost, I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor Bose for having accepted this particular invitation. And this has been facilitated by uh, one of our own past students, Madhavi Puranam, who actually for the past four days been conducting a conclave of Nartanam, a journal that comes in on Indian dance, a quarterly journal. She is here. I'm thankful to her for having uh, facilitated this particular visit of uh, Professor Bose. And as soon as we came to know about that, she was gracious enough to inform us that she's coming. Since the last uh, few years, I, I mean, from almost a decade that we were trying to get her here and uh, after so many years that we could realize this particular dream of she coming to this particular un to our university and as soon as i proposed this to the vice chancellor within a day i got a letter saying yes on that so that was really hard thing to see because uh, several times we'll have a lot of inquiries about who she is what she is why how we how will that be useful and things like that but nothing of that sort just an yes on the letter and it came back to us and i'm so thankful to the vice chancellor for having given us so much of an encouragement by just signing it and saying yes to it in a day's time 
and after that it was our uh, uh, we had a long discussion at the department and also at the school level i thank both my head of the department uh, professor shivraju and the dean of the school shri ramlinga shastri garu both of them have been so nice to me and all through you know they are, they were pushing everything in a, in a very very quick fashion so the entire thing has been a uh, teamwork of the administrative high heads of different department school and the university head and uh, was very very ably been supported by the other uh, group of officers in the in the university like the our pr boss office especially mr ashish and uh, his team has been so nice to arrange the entire event as such uh, i am thankful to all of you and also those uh, students and other uh, faculty members who are here who have made this a kind of a presentable kind of an audience group because generally for dance poetry music you have lot of small groups of pockets of people coming over here i'm thankful to all of you for having taken this time i'm also thankful to my own students who have been supporting us uh, to uh, do this particular event um and uh, finally the the supporting staff and staff who have uh, been kind enough to be here of the raman auditorium and supported us thank you all